Howdy everybody, this is IndiePixel here, and I am happy to bring you guys part 5 of the intro to VEX series. Sorry for my delay, I've been working on some client projects, so didn't have time to do any YouTube videos for the last few weeks. So I'm back, and I'm going to start pumping these guys out for you guys. So in this video, in part 5, we are going to cover something a little bit more advanced, you know, it's just the next step in your VEX adventures, if you will. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn about how to find neighbors and how to use PC open. So let's talk about neighbors first. So what I want to do here is I'm going to show you guys how to find the neighbors of a particular point that you provide. And in this case, we're just going to assign some point colors to them so we can identify them uh, just for learning purposes. So once we do that, then we're going to figure out how to use that same sort of technique to find borders on a particular piece of geometry. And it, it, in this case, it actually works better when you have organized points. Uh, we'll see in the last example in this tutorial how the borders don't necessarily work. So we'll cover that when we get to it. And then finally, we're going to take a look at how to use PC Open, PC Iterate, and PC Import to process a PC file. It's like a point cloud file, right? But in this case, we can use that point cloud file to process points on a piece of geometry using VEX. Okay, so then we're going to close out this particular tutorial or this video, and we're going to learn how to actually create a border fall off based on the border of a piece of geometry. And in this case, I just decided to, to create a simple like landmass uh, if you wanted to create you know stamps for some sort of terrain um, in your game. So in this case, we have a digital asset here where you can control the remeshing. Uh, you can control the max points to reduce or increase that fall off. Uh, you can change the blurring amount. So it's kind of like a fake erosion, really. It just blurs everything, just smoothing the whole thing. And we can control the height as well, like so. But really what the main concept that I want to show off is this border selection. How do we create this fall off from the border to the inner part of the mesh and for any type of mesh as well. So super helpful and especially when you're doing trains like this. So let's go over and learn some of the basics first before we jump into this particular example here. So I'm going to jump back out and let's go and create a new geometry container here. And I'm just going to call this neighbors because we're going to cover the neighbors first. All right, so let's get a grid like so. And we'll leave the rows and columns the same, but I am going to hook up the relationship here. So we always keep it square like so. Okay. So what I want to do is first just identify what the neighbors function inside of X does. Okay. So I'm going to drop down a wrangle node here. And what I'm going to do is call this uh, neighbors, like so. And it's actually not too hard, but what I'm going to do is just walk through how it works for you guys. So the first thing I want to do is create a new array. And I'm going to call this the maze for neighbors, just short for neighbors. And it needs to be an array, so we have to put those two brackets next to it. Okay, because it's going to fill it with a bunch of points, so all the neighboring points. So basically the concept here is if we have a point right here, I want to find all the neighbors. So it's all the points that are actually attached. So it's going to be these four points here. Okay. And so <clears throat> in order to do this, what I'm going to do is just type out neighbors. And you'll notice if we go to the help, so let's pop open the help here, and let's type in neighbors. And we want the vex. There we go. We want the vex version here. So you can see in the help, we want an input number. So it's the points that we want to process. And I actually wanted the neighbors. Hold on one second. There it is, neighbors. All right. So it wants the input and a point number. So this works out pretty well for us because me hide the help here. What we can do is just give it the current geometry, which is input zero, right? That's that first input there. And then we can give it the current point number. So 
at PT num, like so. Now, that will give us, for each point, the amount of points that are next to it. And it will also store the point IDs for all those points. All right, so that's what th this is returning. It's returning, let's go back to that help there. So it's returning a, an array of integers, okay? So that means we have all the point IDs of all the neighboring points. So for this particular point, we're going to get this point and this point because this point isn't connected. This is where the, the PC open method comes into play because what if I do want to find that point within a radius? So if, if I have this point selected, how do I find all the points within a radius around that point? So it's two ways to find points in a mesh. So we'll cover that PC open here later. But for now, let's say for int i equals zero, and i is less than, and what we want to do is we want to say that i is less than the number of points that we have inside of this integer array called nays. And in order to do that with a, an array inside of x, we need to use that len function, short for length. So we'll get the len of nays and then iterate, so i plus 1, or i plus plus. All right, so now we have a loop, so we're looping through all those points. All right, and what I want to do is I want to say, I want to set the color of each one of those particular points. So in order to set the color of the particular point that we currently have selected inside of this nays array, we need to utilize a function called set point adder or attrib there we go and so what we want to do is we want to set a color so in order to do this what we'll say is set point attrib we're going to say geo self because we want to process or we want to set a point attribute on this particular set of geometry itself and then we want to set the color attribute so that's cd lowercase d the point number is going to be the current iteration that we're on. So it's going to be nays i. And then the value, <coughs> it's going to be, let's just color these guys red. So that's red. And then we'll set that value, like so. And that turned the whole thing red. So let me actually get rid of this set value here. And that's because, well, we are setting all of the points to red right now because what we're doing is we're going through every single point in this particular loop. So what if I wanted to set a particular point? So what we need to do is we need to actually specify a particular point number. So I'm going to call this the point num, like so. So I'm going to create a new parameter here, and it's going to be an integer channel. I'm going to call this point num, like so. And instead of using that at pt num, I want to use point num. This is a value that's going to be provided to us by this channel that we create. So now you can see as I move this along, or increment the value there, I'm selecting the points that are connected to this particular point. And what we can do here also is set the point attribute for the current point that we're on. So geoself cd, and we want the current point num that we've selected, and we want to do it as green. And again, we can do that set. So you can see that you don't necessarily need the set. But if you do look at the help over here, it does like to have the mode set, even though it still does work. I think by default, it is just setting it. But it's good practice to get into setting the mode. So there we go. So now as I increment through this particular piece of geometry, I'm getting the current point, which is being set to green. And then I'm finding all of its neighbor points, which are being set to red. So imagine you can start to use this to process 
the values on all of the points of this particular geometry inside of its own loop. So let's say you wanted to set up some sort of like smoothing type of operation or you wanted to do some image processing on the the colors of the, the points themselves. So you could blend all the colors together and blur it or you could smooth out the, the height values of the particular mesh. This is how you would start to go about doing that. Okay, and it's just really good practice within VEX to start getting into some of these more complex operations and learning about these other methods that we have, neighbors and set point attribute. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's take a look at setting or finding the borders. So we'll do another attribute wrangle node and call this find borders. Okay. So again, what I want to do is I want to loop through all the points and find all of the neighbors for each point. So in order to do this, I am going to get the neighbors. So again, that's a, an array of points. And we're going to utilize that neighbors function. And we're going to give it the input of zero because that is where we're inputting the geometry that we want to work on. And in this case, I do want to use that PT num because we're going to loop through all of the, the points. Because you'll notice that some points only have two points or three points. So let's take this particular point right here. So let's find the point number. So point 21 right here. So point 21 only has three points connected to it. Whereas if we look at point 20, it's got four points connected to it. So what we can do is we can say, well, if you only have three points or maybe two points, so anything less than four, you're probably a border. All right, so let's take a look at that. So let's go through and we'll say if maze, actually we need to do that len function again. So it's maze, if the length of that is less than four, then we're a border point. So what I want to do is I want to color it. So we're going to use that set point attrib function and we want to do the geo self that's the this piece of geometry that we're working on we want to set the color and we want to give it the current point number and that's this particular point that we're working on okay so it's this pt num right here because we're all we're doing is we're saying well if this particular pt num has less than four neighbors then you're a border and because we're running over points, this is basically a one big loop. So for each point, this code is going to run. Okay. So I'm going to give it at PT num. And we're going to set the color to blue. Because I've already used all the other colors. Let's do a set. Semicolon. And check it out. And boom. We now have the borders of this particular geometry. Now this works really well on an organized piece of geometry. It works really well on a grid. You'll see here when we get to the fall off, that doesn't work so well. You can still find it, but what you'd, what you'd have to do is actually look at edges instead of points. All right, and I'll cover that in a, a later tutorial, but I just wanted to start to introduce these particular functions to you guys in this intro series, okay? All right, so that's how you find connected neighbors in a piece of geometry. So now let's actually find points based off of a radius that we defined. And in order to do that, what we have to do is we need to utilize the PC open, PC iterate, and PC import functions. So I'm going to drop down a wrangle node over here. All right, and we're going to call this the PC open. All right. And what I want to do is I want to iterate over a bunch of points that are within a distance to a given point. So let's turn our, our point numbers here. So let's say I pick point 60. So let's do that. Let's say that I want to provide a point number. So we're going to just call this PT, BNT num. And that's going to be equal to CHI because we're just going to allow a user to define the point number. Okay, and we will create that channel. 
So currently we're picking point number zero over here. So I'm going to set it to 60. All right, so that's going to set the point right here. All right, so what I want to do is I want to create another integer, and I'm going to call this handle. And we're going to say this is equal to PC open. All right. And what I want to do is first go and just look up that help. This is what I always do. So whenever you're learning something, you want to utilize the help that we have here that side effects provides. So PC open. What it wants is either a file name, which is a string, or an input, which is an integer, a channel, a vector, or a string, a radius, and an integer of max points over here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is say 0 for the input. Uh, for the channel, I'm going to find the position. So P, and we're going to utilize the position of the current points. So in order to get the position of the point that we have selected, we need to provide another variable here, and that's going to be a vector because we want the position. Everything is going to be based off of the position that we provide. And we're going to call this the P pause, and that is going to be a point method because we want to get the position so from input 0 I want to get the P position All right so if we type in point over here for our help there we go we want the string geometry or the op input which is 0 in this case and we want the string attribute name which is P for position and the point number so let's put in that PNT num there we go, and that gives us the point number. So now I want to provide that. So we're going to say p pause. Oops, there we go, p pause. So let's go back to our PC open help. There we go. So now we have the position. Let's give it a radius. So this radius is going to be based off of a channel as well. So I'm going to just give it a CHF for a float channel and call this the radius. And then I want to do a max points and that's an integer. So we're going to do CHI and call this max points just to keep everything simple. And with that, we are now going through the current selected position. So we find a point that we want to use based off of this channel right here. I'm also going to go and create the other channels, so these two guys, radius and max points. I'm going to set the radius to 1 and max points to 5 for now. All right, so again, we're finding the point number that we want to base our search off of. We're finding the position of that point number that we selected. And then we're opening a point cloud file and storing it inside of this handle. Now, this handle is the ID or the integer value of this particular file. So we can use that in the PC iterate and the PC import functions. This is needed by those functions. So PC open is where you start when you start working with these point cloud files. Okay, so now that we've got that information up and running, so let's do a while and we'll say PC iterate like so, and we'll provide it the handle is greater than zero. All right, so we're going to check out the help on this one to figure out why this works right here. So let's go back to the help and let's do a PC iterate. All right, so the PC iterate takes a handle. So we created that handle because we opened a point cloud file. So now the handle has information in it. All right, and you can see right here it says the function returns one while there are points left in the iteration loop or zero when there are no further points. So because we have a radius and we have a set max points, what's happening here is we're putting a bunch of points into this point cloud file. And all this is just being stored in memory, okay? 
And so that file now has a handle. So we have a link to this particular file. And this file contains all these points that were found within this radius and this max points channel. So what we're doing is we're saying, OK, or what PC iterate is doing is saying, OK, I'm being given a file using the handle. And for every point, I want to do something inside of this while loop. And when I run out of points to process, I'm going to return 0, which would break this while loop. Because we return 1 until we're out of points. And then when it's out of points, it returns 0. Awesome. So now what we can do is we can say, well, I want to actually get the point inside of this file. Because the PC iterate literally is just, it is looping through the points, but it's only telling us when we have no more points to loop over. So what we need to do is we need to say, well, we need to get the current point. So I'm going to create a new or yeah, a new attribute or a new variable called current point. And I'm not going to assign anything to it because that's where the PC import comes in. PC import, let's take a look at the, the help here. So PC import. All right, so this is going to return a point inside of that point cloud file that we opened with PC open. Okay, so what we need to do is say PC import. We're going to give it the handle. So that's the file. Let's give it our handle. And we want to do the string channel name. So in this case, because I just want the point number, you can see down here there are a couple of special channel names that we can import because these are most likely the more common things that you're going to want to do when you start working with these point cloud files. Okay. And so I am going to say that the channel name is called point number because I really just want the ID, the current point that we're on while looping through this PC iterate function. So I'm going to say point dot number. And then finally, I want to store that value. And because here in the help, whenever you see this ampersand right here, that means that what it's going to do is it's going to store the value into that particular variable that you provide it. It basically, think of it as it's exporting the value from this PC import into this current point variable or whatever variable that you assign to it. So what I'm going to do is say current point. And now what it's doing is every single time we're running through this, it's storing the current point ID, the point number, into this variable right here. So now we have access to it. So what we can do is we can set an attribute on it. We can set any attribute that we have. In this case, I'm just going to use color because it's visual and it's easier to see on the video. So we're going to do a set point attrib function. And we're going to do that geo self again, because we want it on this particular piece of geometry. So let's take a look at the, the help again. All right, so the string name, I want to set the CB. All right, and then I want to set that point number. Now that point number that we're currently on is this curve point. So we can copy that and paste that right there. All right, and we want to give it the value. So in this case, I'm going to color all these points green. So I'm going to use those oops, these brackets right here. And we're going to say 0, 1, 0. And we'll set the mode to set and close out that function. And I put that in the wrong deal. There we go. So now you can see we are selecting the points that were, are within that radius that we currently have selected, radius of 1. All right. So I can increase this and then increase the amount of points also, and then decrease this. There we go. Oops, went way too far there. All right, so that is how we now start to select points that aren't necessarily connected to one another, but are within a distance of each other, this radiant, radius distance right here, and the max points. Right? If we only have this down to something like 5, then even if we have the radius at 4, it's only going to give us 5 points, because we told it to only look for 
the five closest points. So if I put this up to something like 10, we get the 10 closest points, or 20, and start going out. And we can just start adding this and increasing these values. So if I were to, let's say, increase the rows and columns on this, Let's turn off our points and point numbers there. And let's change the point number. You can see now we're getting a better way of selecting points that are within a radius. So you can just leave the radius at something like 10 and then just control the max points. There you go. And that is how you use the PC Open, PC Iterate, and PC Import methods inside of VEX to search for stuff that's around a particular position in space. Okay, so now that we have all that information about these two types of ways of searching for points around a particular position or point. Let's take a look at a practical example of how we can utilize this in our everyday workflows. So in this case what I want to do is I want to create a falloff based off of some random shape that I, I create, not, not a grid. I want to create some random falloff and give myself the ability to control that fall off. So I want to be able to either increase that fall off or decrease it or decrease it and then just change that blurring amount. Okay so it's a combination of VEX and the nodes inside of Houdini. So let's go and recreate this. Alright so I'm gonna create a new geometry container here. Turn off that previous one. And let's jump inside and let's create a curve. I'm going to drop down a curve. I'm going to go to my uh, top view here by hitting spacebar 2 and hit enter on the keyboard. And that puts me into an edit mode. So in this case, the grid numbers are actually very useful to us because when we use the PC open, you remember that we're using a radius, right? So a radius of 1. It's pretty big in this particular, that's one meter, so it's three feet, right, roughly three feet. So if we create a shape, what we want to do is try to make it maybe somewhere around two. I mean, I just wanted to bring that up because the grid numbers do help here uh, in terms of understanding how the PC open is working. So what I want to do is actually delete the values that I put in there already. Okay, so I want to create some random shape. And I, I use this particular technique when I create terrains because I find that a lot of terrain editors, they're, well, awesome, like World Machine, you know, and um, Map Magic for Unity and uh, Geo World, I believe it is. They all, they're all really great at creating that awesome looking terrain with all the erosion and the colors and stuff like that and they give you a lot of ways especially world machine they, they give you a way to stamp down shapes right to create that height map that initial height map that you go and disturb with noises and erosion but when you're designing a game i i really do like to be able to design my terrain using just very simple stamp shapes and then what I do is I convert my whole level that is in this very, very basic um, height map. And then I, I process it through all the terrain editors like Map Magic or Gaia for Unity. Okay, so this is what I, I usually use this technique for just to give it some context. All right, so I'm going to make this shape close, this curve. I'm going to reverse it as well in this case. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to leave it as a polygon doesn't really matter um, right now. So what I want to do is remesh this because currently you can't, if I were to just use this to try to find a border and a, and a falloff value, I don't have enough points to process that. So I remesh it 
and control this target edge length for the resolution. And that will give me a better way to create this border fall off value. So let's give it some more points there. That's, that's pretty good, just like that. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to find the borders. So we could go in and use that attribute wrangle, that find borders technique that we just did. So if I come in here and what I want to do is create that maze array and use the neighbors function or method, give it the current input geometry, which is zero. So the first input here, and we'll do the at PT num because I'm, I'm going to loop through every point and see if or see how many other points are connected to this particular point that we're looping through. Because again, we're running over points. So every point we're going to run the code that is inside of this attribute wrangle node. All right, so we're going to say if the length or length, but it is len inside of Houdini here, if that length of nays is greater than, or let's say is less than four, then we're a border point, right? So we should be able to say, we'll set the at trib or set the point at trib here. And again, it's geo self and we're setting the color and then we want to give it the point number. So that is the current iteration that we're on. Well, actually we want to give it the current point number. Yeah. So at ptnum and we will set it to a value of black let's say and we'll say set and you'll notice that we're only getting a few so let's say we're less than let's say five and then I click out of here and we're almost getting all the points here <coughs> The other thing you can do too, instead of this, so let me comment this out here, is use the set point group. So we can say set point group. I think you guys will like this. So let's check out the help for this here. All right. Set point group. So we want the geo handle, which is zero. The name, which is gonna be border, let's say. And the int is the point number. So that's going to be at ptnum. Okay, so the value is going to be one. And our mode is going to be set. So you notice that if the group does not exist, it will be created. All right, so what we're, instead of setting a point attribute, we're setting a point group. So there's a, another way you can, you can set this here. So there we go, it clicked off of it. And now if we turn on our groups, our group display, you can see that we almost have all the points there inside of border, but there are a couple points here that are connected, and that's because this mesh is triangulated, right? And so we have, in this case, one, two, three, four, five. So it's not less than five. If we go to six, though, let's see how this works out. We start to get other points that are internal. So unfortunately, that's not going to work for us in this case. What you need to do in this case is look at the primitives and the edges around us. But I'm going to save that for another tutorial because that starts to get a little bit more complex. So let's get rid of this set point group here. And instead of trying to find the borders with the attribute wrangle, we can use the group node and just set this to border because I have $OS in my group node here for the group name, it's just gonna use this name for the group name. Hopefully that makes sense. And instead of using that base group, I'm gonna say include by edges and say unshared edges. And set this to points and you can see now we get all the edges or the border points here. So much easier. Okay, so with that, what we can do is then go and drop down a color node and colorize 
just call this set initial color and we'll set the border points to black there we go perfect so now what we want to do is I want to loop through all of those border points and I want to find all of the points that are within a distance so not necessarily the neighbors I want to find everything within a distance so I'm going to use the PC open technique for the search okay so let's do an attribute wrangle and we'll call this the border search or fall off search how about that all right so in this case since I already have that border group created I'm gonna go and select the group of the points that we want to run over okay so we're just gonna loop through all those points that are set to black all the points that are in the border group and what I want to do is say int handle is equal to PC open and we want to do the initial so this is always why I like to have the, the help open because it is actually hard to remember all this stuff just off the top of your head it, it gets a lot easier the more you do it but um, I do still like to have the the help open while I'm doing these things so the the channel is going to be the position and we want to take the current point so at P and that works because we're only going to loop over the points in this border group and then what I want to do is define that radius so again I'm going to create a float channel call it radius and then I'm going to create an integer channel and call that max points like so so now I have the handle awesome so we're going to do the while loop and wait for the PC iterate method to complete we'll give it the handle and we'll say if it's still greater than zero meaning it still has points in the file we're going to keep running over all the points in here so again I need to create that integer for that's going to hold the current point number so cur pnt num will work and what we can do is we can say PC import so I want to get the point all right so let's put in PC import here very good and we need the channel name and the handle so handle channel name is going to be our point dot number remember that's a special case for this particular function point number and I want to store the value into that cur p nt num variable that we created earlier on okay so for each one of those points that we find we want to color it black as well so we're going to say set point attrib we'll say the geo self we want the channel that we want to set so that's the color so c small d we want the point number so cur pnt num and we want to set it well first we want to set the color so zero 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 and then set the mode to set <clears throat> there we go let's create our so we'll create the radius and max points and you can see now we're getting a nice fall off and we can basically fall off all the way into the middle we'll change the radius a little bit more max points and there you go so you might be asking yourself okay so now how do we smooth this out because this is still not totally working here All right, so I'm going to leave this to a radius of 2 because that is our max width and depth so in order to smooth it out a really quick and easy way is to use the attribute blur so I'm just going to feed the results of this search into the attribute blur and we'll just call this the blur and what I want to do is blur the CD the color well, there you go and you can make that more refined you can play around with these these values so now it becomes a combination of adjusting these values and the blur values and that's literally all I did nice
pretty cool little effect there. There you go. And that's how you can get some really, really accurate, uh, smooth border fall off colors. So with this particular information now, what we can do is we can create another attribute wrangle and simply add some height to it, some height, like so. And what we'll say is we'll say at p dot y plus equals at c d dot r, something like that. And there we go. Now we have some terrain type of thing. And you can change that smoothing, which feels like a fake erosion, but it's super fake because it's just doing it um, completely over the entire surface with no um, respect to you know water flow and um, rock hardness and all that stuff. Then we can change that fall off. There you go. So just a practical example of you utilizing the uh, PC open. You could do this with the neighbors as well. In this case, it would work pretty well. Um, but I'll leave that up to you guys. I think you get the idea. Um, you know, the other thing that we could do is just pass this through like a point fob. So if I drop down a point fob here, all right, we'll say add height, or we can call it terrain filter. There we go. Okay, so we can take that information and pass through something like a Voronoi noise. So we'll give it the position. And what I will do is create a vector to float. You could do all this in VEX as well, but this video is starting to get a bit long, so I'm not going to necessarily show that. All right, so I'm going to take the color vector, split it. I'm going to multiply distance one with the red color there, and that will be our new height. So <coughs> I'm going to do another vector to float, feed in the original position. You could also use a displace by null because, yeah, all the normals are pointing straight up. Whatever, we're just going to use this, and I'm going to add the current height, so the y value, with our noise value there. And we'll just put that into the P. And I do need to actually do a float to vector. There we go. So this is our new y. There's our x and our z, our originals. And there you go. So now we have a cool way to make terrain stamps here inside of Houdini. There's lot, lots of cool applications here. Um, you can do something like that. Maybe offset it a little bit. There you go. So we're starting to get something more mountainous. All right. Not too shabby. So then we can go back up to the blur. Let's play around with some of the values here. There you go. Or we can just really tighten it up there and make cliffs or something like that. Or just blur it a little bit. Then we can come up here and change that offset. So what I, I would do is I, I create lots of different different types of these stamps and then stamp it around to generate a terrain that is highly um, iteratable, if, that, if that's a word. Um, it's You can direct it really, really well because instead of your terrain being controlled all together with a bunch of masks and over you know one big terrain geometry, uh, all you need to do when you're in your initial design phases is stamp around a lot of these particular land masses that I like to call them or, or mountain stamps and it helps you to design your terrains in a much more designer friendly way I think at least <clears throat> so what I would do is I stamp a bunch of these around convert it to a height map and then apply that to my terrain editor and usually mask out things like the roads or 
where levels or where um, certain like villages or something like that would take place um, and then run the erosion algorithms on that and that usually gives me a pretty good level I'll probably make a tutorial about that here pretty soon I am working on a a new flight um, simulator that will inside of unity that will take advantage of tile based terrains and it's just taken me a long time to actually finish it all it'll be a bunch of you know foliage and terrains and trees and stuff like that and how to get it all into unity and it goes over the flight physics too so anyways i'll save that for later so that is how we do that with pc open and neighbors and arrays and set point attribute and set point group so all this will be available up on the my gumroad so for free so feel free to download it and just use it for a reference thanks so much